Hey everybody, me and Buster Green here. So this is an interesting video. This was originally going to be about Witcher Mercury because as we all know, Witcher Mercury just ended and it ended very abruptly and very quickly and very not seemingly the way it was planned. So throughout Gundam history, a bunch of Gundam shows have always been cut short. Like Gundam X was cut short, Gundam F91 famously was supposed to be a series, but all it got was a movie. And today, what I want to talk about is the original Gundam. Like, from the beginning, Gundam has always been getting shut short. And I'm not sure exactly why it's always Gundam, because, like, with other animators, they usually plan, like, it's definitely going to have 12 episodes, or it's definitely going to have 24 episodes, or it's definitely going to have 50 episodes. But with Gundam, it seems like they always want to shoot for 50, but they don't always get there, which is kind of interesting, especially the way it plays out. So yeah, what, uh, what I want to go over in this video is the original planned 52 episode run of the original Mobile Suit Gundam. So Gundam was planned to have 52 episodes and Tamino like basically planned out the whole show from the get go, which was cool. And I'm guessing with future shows, they did a similar kind of like treatment, which is why with Witch for Mercury, you have all these like weird, like loose ends where they obviously had stuff planned, but then they cut it off. And so what happened with Gundam was after the show was done, like I want to say a year afterwards in like 1980, they produced this book called Gundam Complete Works. And this Gundam Complete Works books has basically the notes that Tomino wrote for the original draft of the story. And very coolly, Mark Simmons has collected like all these notes and as much additional information as possible and translated it and he put it all on his website. So I'm going to read through his translation of the notes and I'm also going to add additional context for stuff that is like a little bit obscure and a little bit too crazy for the average person to comprehend. And on top of that, I'm going to try to as best as possible, like drop down some pictures for stuff that is like a little bit more like conceptual okay so here goes nothing so yeah the notes are basically exactly the same up to episode 22 operation odessa and even then it's there's no major changes from like episode 22 to episode i want to say 33 like there's some minor changes from 22 to 33 but like it's all just minor stuff like names like Miharu's name she has a different last name I think Slager has a different last name too nothing that crazy um anyway episode 33 is where we get our first cut episode episode 33 in the original plan out is fierce battle the dozam's assault and the concept of this episode is that Amuro fights a customized dom called a Dozam, which is apparently a cross between a Dom and an Adzam. So just in my head, I'm imagining it's like a Dom with like an Adzam's weapon rack. So yeah, otherwise this is just like a basic episode. According to this, um, it's really similar to the episode where Amuro fought a bunch of Doms. Char's in this episode a little bit. And then um, yeah, basically they go to side six in this episode and the whole Cameron Bloom fiasco comes out. Uh, so, for the most part, this is just the episode where they meet Cameron Bloom, except there's this added subplot where they fight this Dozam thing. After Side 6, the Battle of Solomon happens, and that plays pretty much out like you saw it. The only difference I see in the notes is that it says in the Battle of Solomon there was a Gun Ranger type mobile suit on the Federation side. I'm guessing this is a variation of a GM, probably like a GM close combat type. Alright, now we start dividing the timelines a little bit when we get to episode 37. So, episode 37 is the start of the Amuro vs. Makuve arc. And it's about the same as what you saw play out in the anime with one small difference. There's this guy, Baram. Apparently, he was a minor character who, like, told Dozozabi to evacuate Solomon in the Battle of Solomon. But in this draft, he comes back and he is apparently a bigger deal. And so what happens is Char wants to kill Makuve, so he manipulates Baram into setting up a very complicated situation that's going to create a three-way conflict between the Gundam, Baram, and Makuve. So anyway, Makuve is in Texas Colony, and so is Char. 
And what happens is Baram is sent out to fight the Gundam and he goes out in a Dwaj, which is a upgraded Rickdom, which we otherwise don't see until Gundam Double Zeta. There's a little bit of confusion on what exactly some of the mobile suits are because the names don't line up 100% with the final versions. Like for example, the Gelgoog is called the Gyan and the Gyan is called the Bakuji, which relatively means base. And even though it says Dwaj here, I've seen alternative versions that describe it as a Dowage. But either way, it seems to be just a variant of a Rick Dom, so just consider it that. And anyway, so Baram fights the Gundam. Um, I want to say he damages White Base, but then the whole Federation army is there, so like he retreats and Amaro chases the Dwaj back to Texas Colony. And then Amaro gets stuck alone in Texas Colony. And that brings us to episode 38, The Duel in Texas. So episode 38 is pretty much exactly the same episode as in the original TV show. Um, there's some minor changes in the notes. The biggest change is that um, in the normal episode, Dr. Flanagan accompanies um, Char and Lala into the colony in this version. Even though Lala is still a new type from the Flanagan Institute, the man who accompanies them is actually a minor doctor named Dr. Sophia who is still a man and by all accounts is still the same character as Dr. Flanagan, but just, I guess this implies that Dr. Flanagan is a bigger deal and not like going with them in this case. Anyway, then there's a minor change that to make this episode a little bit longer, uh, Amaru ends up rescuing a 17 year old boy named Cathar Bailey who hates Zeon. I'm guessing in this draft, Texas Colony isn't abandoned. Otherwise it's just strange that this random kid is there alone. And yeah, otherwise the episode is exactly what we saw with the Gundam fighting Shar and Makube all at the same time. Alright, then we go on to episode 39. So episode 9 is entitled Shar and Sela, and this is a really interesting one. So this is originally the end of the Texas Colony arc where Shar and Sela meet up. But in this longer draft, it's like the third part of a Texas Colony arc. And so what happens is the white base finally arrives at Texas Colony to rescue Amro. Um, I'm not sure if Makuve is dead or not, because I've kind of like lost if he like lived in this reality or not. Um, there's another Dwaj that shows up. This one's piloted by a guy named Jin Lime. And otherwise, most of the same stuff pl played out in the original episode plays out. One minor difference is Amro actually completely destroys Char's Gelgook in this version, but Char still gets away without needing it. Um, Char eventually encounters Sela on the horse. Um, there's a little bit of difference here, like they actually reference Gundam the Origin, or rather the Gundam the Origin subplot that Char Asmol was a different guy who Char killed and stole his name. One other minor difference is that uh, in this episode, Hayato gets injured in the fight with the Dwaj, and this is the first time that Frau Bo takes an interest within him. Uh, in the normal show, this takes place in the Battle of Solomon, but I guess here it uh, just came up now. So after this is episode 40, Shalya Bull's Charge, and um, this is a major deviation point in the show. So this whole episode is just squeezed into the last like 10 episodes of the TV episode 38, I think. So yeah, Shalya Bull is probably one of the most major Gundam characters to get cut down and recycled in a bunch of other strange ways. So like I said, Shalya Bull is only on screen for a pathetic 10 minutes of screen time in the normal TV show, even though they make him out to be a really big deal. He's completely cut out of the movie version, and minutes after he launches testing a new type of mobile armor, Amuro immediately comes out of nowhere and kills him. He's one of the only other new types in the original Gundam outside of Lala, Shar, Amuro, and the whole white base crew at the end of the show, but Shalya Bull's new type abilities are a little bit different from everyone else's, with him being able to read people's surface thoughts and in some cases just be able to straight up predict what they're about to say before they say it. So he catches a lot of people off guard that way. So yeah, this original draft is pretty different. There's a couple of small differences in this episode, like Sela starting to have feelings for Amuro on this one. Also, when Shalia Bull and Char meet, which is still in the original version, um, in this longer version, Shalia Bull reads Char's mind and realizes that Char is plotting murder against the Zabi family. But he ends up disregarding it, thinking Char won't actually go through with it. 
Anyway, in the end, the episode's pretty much the same, but Amuro defeats Shally Bull using the G-Sky, and also, apparently, in the battle, Amuro goes semi-crazy from having a fight between two new types. Yeah, so Shalia Bull still dies pretty quickly in this original draft, but the main difference here is after the fact, he has something of a cult figure status in the show's original version, with multiple people coming out of the woodwork to try and come along and avenge him. Also, I'm pretty sure since he was cut out of the original show so much, Tomino had big regrets about this, and there was a lot of unutilized characterization that he wanted to put into Shalia Bull that he would later put into Papton of Skurako. Skurako is very loosely inspired by Shalia Bull. He canonically replaces Shalia Bull as the leader of the Jupiter exploration fleet, and like Shalia Bull, he's a new type and he's from Jupiter and all that jazz. Shalia Bull's cut down character arc is though kind of an interesting factoid because it makes me wonder which characters in like later Gundam series would get similar treatments and just be killed off to remove them from the plot. After this, the one-year war keeps going and we get a arc settled around the Battle of uh, Granada. I believe in Greater Gundam lore, this battle still happened, but we don't see the white base crew participate in this. So yeah, what's going on right now is in episode 41, the white base crew goes back to Luna 2 to like restock their supplies and meanwhile Char, Lala, and everyone else goes back to Granada to meet up with Castilia. Anyway, at this point, uh, the Battle of Granada starts, and I believe it starts with Cassilia dispatching a bunch of ships to attack Luna 2. There's a pretty major battle. There's also these mobile suits that are called Gatchas participating in this, as well as Space Goofs. Okay, we get Space Goofs in this one. I'm not really sure what the Gatcha is. I think there might be an MSV suit with a similar name. In my head, I'm just imagining action Zakus because um, in one of the later Gundam series when they showed the Battle of Granada, they said that Cassilia had action Zakus, so I'm assuming it's just those. Anyway, so this is just a battle episode, and the only other interesting thing here is that Sayla tries to use the gun tank in this episode, and canonically, I don't think she ever used the gun tank. Episode 42 is The Road to Granada. It's another part of the Battle of Granada arc. So in this episode, Char attacks Amuro in a new mobile suit called the Kikaroga. Um, there's very little information about this. All I know about it is, is it has some kind of all-range attack, so it has probably like a wire hand attack. Um, best guess is maybe it's something like a Saikamu Zaku. So imagine Char has a customized Saikamu Zaku. That's kind of how I'm imagining it. Otherwise, it could also be the Zeon, but I'm pretty sure the Zeon comes in later. So yeah... This is also the episode where Amuro gets the magnetic coating on the Gundam and there's another scene in this one where when Amuro gets the magnetic coating, the guy who gives Amuro the magnetic coating says that his father has been killed off screen by the Flanagan Institute, which is a really weird twist. So I guess in this one, Amuro's father just doesn't get that random shit death of falling downstairs drunk. Anyway, otherwise, this is a pretty basic episode. Amuro fights Char and loses. Amuro gets the magnetic coating, and then Amuro uses the magnetic coating to destroy Char's Kikaroga. Char gets rescued by Lala's Elemif and gets the hell out of there, and then the Federation and the White Base head for Granada. Which brings us to episode 43, the Battle of Granada. So, the Battle of Granada is another pretty basic Gundam episode. Do you guys remember when the Adzam was used in the um, original Gundam the first time it appeared? Um, it was piloted by Makuve and Cassilia. So calling back to that in this episode, Cassilia deploys three upgraded space Adzams, which are apparently like the final version. Like the one we saw in the show was a prototype and this is now the final. Um, so that's giving me like kind of OFMS team vibes. Otherwise, it's basically just another battle episode where the Gundam fights the Adzams. Char is there. Um, I guess he's maybe piling the Adzam, but it's not really clear. Otherwise, it just says he's fighting in his ship. This is the episode where Cassilia reveals that she knows who Char really is. And she doesn't consider him a threat, which is why she like allows him to exist. Oh, and one more fun fact, the Galbali Alpha is the main attack force of Granada, otherwise this suit is cut out of the show and only appears in MSV. 
Episode 44 is Lala and the Elmith. I believe this episode exists in the final version and it's like Shining Lala. Anyway, so this episode is pretty similar but with a major twist ending. So like the original episode, it starts with um, the white base crew hearing Lala sounds and then the Elmith goes around sinking several Federation battleships. Um, the big twist here is they're still on the moon and the way it plays out in this version is the Gundam and Sela go to fight the Elmif. Sela gets horribly injured. And then Amuro realizes that the Elmif they've been fighting up to now isn't the full Elmif. It's just like the ship that Lala's flying around in. And the Elmif itself is actually a much bigger underground facility that I guess is like a server room that like controls the Saikamu system for the Elmif ship part, which is really, really interesting to contemplate. So this is a two-parter. It goes straight up into episode 45, The Encounter of Lala. So yeah, Amuro goes underneath the surface of the moon and he finds like the G. He has to use the G-bull and he finds that under the surface of the moon is like the Elmas server room. And then at the same time, Giren starts sending out Shalia Bull's subordinates. There's this guy named Piccadilia who comes out and he's also using a Galbaldi. So then there's this massive battle between Kai and Hayato against Shar and Piccadilia, and while they're fighting Shar and Piccadilia, Amuro is underground fighting the Elmif server. Also, a cool fact in this one, Shar gets a custom Galbaldi in this one. So yeah, as Amuro gets closer and closer to the Elmif server, he starts having hallucinations, and this eventually plays into the whole Lala psycho scene that we all saw in the final version. Um, the biggest difference in this version is Piccadilia steals a lot of Shard's thunder. He steals a lot of Shard's dialogue, and on top of that, I think he kind of takes on a role similar to Jared when Four died in Zeta Gundam, in that he kind of like accuses Lala of being like a traitor for like talking to Amuro in like a playful way. Um, but otherwise, things still play out mostly the same, with Amuro trying to kill Shar and then Lala taking the hit for Shar and dying. Except in this version, it isn't Amuro who kills her, it's Piccadilia. Anyway, so after Piccadilia kills Lala, both Shar and Amuro freak the fuck out on both him and each other. Shar still mostly blames Amuro for getting her killed, but then Piccadilia is immediately killed by Kai and Hayato, who finally arrive on the scene. Okay, now we come to episode 46, and this is probably my favorite cut episode, just because there's so much melodrama in this one, and there's so much really really good shit in this one that I think they honestly probably shouldn't have cut out so yeah Amuro gets back to the white base after killing Lala and he's just like majorly hung over from like the hallucinations and all that um Char sends Sela a flower bouquet to try and like amend their relationship but she's like already like considered him a monster for like all the war crimes he's done and on top of this this is the episode where Char finally meets Giren Zabi for the first time and they have like this massive conversation where like, Garen wants to see Shar's face, but Shar won't remove the mask and he lies and says he's deformed. And then Garen kind of knows that he has met Shar before and he's trying to like figure out who Shar is. So then the other big thing that's happening in this episode is um, in the original Gundam, if you guys remember, at a certain point, Degwin gets fed up with Garen's like Nazi shit. So he goes off on his own to try and negotiate peace with General Rebel. So that still happens in this version, but in this version, um, he gets, I guess, lost trying to find General Rebel, and instead he finds the White Base. So they take Degwin aboard the White Base. He also has a secretary named Cusco Al. Bright instantly falls in love with Cusco Al, and this is a whole, like, separate side plot. But anyway, then Degwin, like, recognizes Sela, so... Degwin and Sela have a talk where uh, basically he like apologizes for killing her father and then he like asks her to kill him but she won't do it because Sela's like not like that and then while they're talking Sela slips that her brother is posing as Char and Degwin like doesn't know how to like deal with this information and before he can tell anyone he gets like killed by his own forces like in some kind of like weird crisscross attack. Episode 47 is titled The Search for Xeon's Ultimate Weapon. Um, so after Degwin died, he brought along his secretary, Cusco Al, with him onto the white base. And since Degwin died in the battle, um, Cusco Al is just stuck on the white base. 
She ends up defecting to the Federation side, but people think she's still a spy, but she's just kind of stuck with them. Amuro warns Bright that he thinks she's probably a spy, and Bright doesn't want to believe Amuro, but he trusts Amuro, so he just says, I'll be careful with her. Anyway, after that, they go to another colony called Banshee 38. This is another abandoned colony, like the Texas colony. And while they're, like, poking around this colony, they get attacked by another mobile suit fleet with these mobile suits called the Garabas. I have no idea what these are. I'm just going to drop a random image for what I think they are. Anyway, uh, Amaro has a fight with one of them. He captures the pilot alive, and he interrogates the pilot to find out that Giran is planning Operation Solar Ray, which in this play out happens later. And at this time, Shar gets his own Garaba. And even though Shar got a Garaba, the Zeong is still being built elsewhere. The White Base team interrogates Cusco Al to try and find out more information about Operation Solar Ray, but she doesn't know anything. So then episode 48 is the end of the Cusco Al arc. So episode 48 is the attack on the Jupiter fleet. Um, so at this point, Char has kind of realized that he's given up his like crusade to kill the Zabi family, and he's now more obsessed with defeating the Gundam. And this is causing like a self identity crisis because he's like wondering like where his like priorities are lying. So Char ends up getting really rational about the situation he's in and who he has to kill and which order he has to kill them in, and he decides that he has to kill the Gundam before he kills Girin. Because if he kills Giran first, while well, he's just hanging out with Giran, Zeon will lose the war, and if the war ends, then he won't have a chance to kill the Gundam at all. Because if he can't kill the Gundam, he can't avenge Lala, and so for that reason, he decides he can't kill Giran right now. Anyway, after that, Shar and Giran hang out, and we get introduced to two new characters who are more of Shalya Bull's like followers. The first guy is Darden, and the other guy is Gola. They're both introduced, and... Darden sounds like he's another old man ace pilot type, while Gola has kind of a more interesting character type. We don't really get a character like this until later Gundam series, but he's described as another new type teenager pilot, and they make him sound like kind of an evil Xeon version of Amuro, but with like way less mobile suit experience. Anyway, so Shar and Giran think that Darden is the better MS pilot, so they assign him to fight the white base, and they gift him this new two-seater Gelgoog, although because of the name mix-ups, this could also just be a rerun of the Brabro, which was also sometimes referred to as the Gelgoog in these notes, and also did canonically have two seats, so it's either a Gelgoog or a Brabro. Anyway, after this, the Federation decides they're going to launch an attack against the Jupiter Energy Fleet to cripple Zeon. And as soon as this happens, Cusco Al hears about it, and decides that even though she wasn't actually a spy, she's still more loyally politically to Zeon over the Federation. So she escapes from the White Base and she's off to warn Zeon about the Federation's attack on the energy fleet. So Bright just is like, oh shit, she was a spy after all. Sorry, my bad. So he hunts her down personally and shoots her to death like a dog. And uh, this is a big moment for Bright because, uh, you know, Bright had like a huge crush on this woman even though she was obviously a spy and then he gunned her down and murdered her. So I guess this kind of cements Bright and Mariah's relationship at this point because like both of the people they would rather be with have died, I guess. The episode finally ends with a massive mobile suit battle between Amuro and either the Brabro or the two-seater Gelgu and he pretty much one-shots it just like the first Brabro. And then afterwards, he starts to sense Gola and thinks it's Lala coming back from the dead. Anyway, so that's the mobile suit battle in this one. It's Amuro versus a two-seater Gelgoog with these two idiots in it. They end up instantly getting killed, pretty much, because they can't, like, agree to, like, pilot the Gelgoog harmoniously. Uh, meanwhile, at the same time, um, the white base is gearing up for the final battle against the, like, remainder of the Xeon forces. Anyway, so then... Episode 49 is uh, Solar Array Part 1. So Gola, one of the pilots in the two-seater Gelgoog, escapes. So he escapes and he tells Giran that Shar Asmol is actually Castle Daikun. And uh, seemingly Giran doesn't really care because it doesn't really affect like anything to him. He doesn't think that Shar or Castle are actually a threat. 
So at this point, he gives Gola the Zeong, and Shar is still using the Garaba. And then Girin blasts the Federation forces with the solar ray and just like annihilates half the Federation forces. So at this point, um, Girin thinks he's won. So he sends out Shar and Gola to fight the white base. So they have this big two on one battle. It's Amuro against Gola in the Zeong, and Shar comes back in the Garaba again. Amuro easily and quickly kills Gola and the Zeong, and then has a minor new tech hallucination, like the same style as the one he had with Lala. Anyway, Gola dies, and Amuro wonders if he only exists to murder other people. And that brings us to episode 50, Soul Ray Part 2. So Amuro goes back to the abandoned Banshee 38 colony, and Shar confronts him there in the Garaba. At the same time this is happening, General Revel, who is still alive in this version, advances the remaining Federation forces on the remaining Xeon forces. So this seems to be like one of the most final battles between Shar and Amuro because at this point Shar has seemingly lost the will to live because he's like given up on his revenge against the zombies, Lala is dead, and all he really had left is defeating Amuro, but Amuro kicks his ass. Um, so yeah, they have a, like, decisive battle, and then after it's over, Amuro discovers that the Banshee 38 colony is where Girin is hiding his solar ray. Then Amuro defeats Char and blows up the solar ray on the spot after finding it, and meanwhile Char manages to escape from the Garaba at the last second despite being morally wounded, and Sela has a new type flash realizing that Char is still alive. So this brings us to episode 51, The Annihilation of Xeon, part one. This is the final two-parter. So Char returns wounded back to side three. This is another major episode because at this point, like, Girin acknowledges Char as, like, a really, really cool guy. So Girin promotes Char to a vice admiral, and he gives him a medal and everything, and this, like, devastates Char on the inside because he got a medal from the man he swore he would kill. So yeah, more literally, Shar realizes that he just helped the son of the man who murdered his father achieve a dominance over the entire human race. And at the same time, this also coincides with Amuro having a very similar epiphany. He's like been stressed out that he's been killing so many people, especially other new types, and he realizes that killing soldiers in the war is completely a useless exercise, because fundamentally all people are the same and have the same goals in life. And so then he realizes that it's not the soldiers are, are his enemy, it's the people creating the war. And he realizes that the real monster behind this war is Giran Zabi, because Giran Zabi's been dragging out the war this time. So yeah, suddenly Shar and Amuro are synced up that Giran is the true enemy that they have to stop. At the same time, like the full Federation forces all attack the final Xeon base. Um, I guess this is still about a coup. And uh, General Rebel still alive. Um, it's not that different. Oh, uh, here's one thing that's majorly different. Amuro vows that he's going to stop Giran Zabi, who is like the source of all evil. And on top of that, Cathbar Bailey, the kid that they picked up in Texas Colony, finally dies in the Battle of Balaku. Um, I guess he became a GM pilot and like fought alongside Amuro. But Amuro feels incredibly responsible for getting him killed. And this brings us to episode... 52, Annihilation of Xeon Part 2, the final battle of the original planned out Gundam series. So yeah, this is the final battle in a battle coup. Girin thinks he's going to win, but doesn't understand why he's losing. He doesn't really get new types. We have more of a typical Toku structure for this one with Girin being the main bad and Char being his like second in command. It's like actually very, very similar to like a lot of like Tokusatsu setups I've seen. The white base crew lands at a Baku and they're trying to track Giran down and kill him at the same time. Uh, Amuro starts at this point being hearing Lala's ghost. And then eventually the whole white base crew hears Lala's ghost so they can like realize that they have to like get out of a Baku. And then finally Giran confronts Amuro face to face and it's like a ridiculous situation where Girin pulls out the self-destruct switch for a battle coup to kill everyone, but before he can, Amuro ends up being the one shooting Girin Zabi in the head. And then all the Zeon like forces like open fire on Amuro to try and kill him, and 
Um, I was like, why are you trying to shoot me? This place is going to blow up. Just get out of here. And then at the same time, Amar was having this like massive like third eye awakening because he's like somehow like bonding with Lala's ghost and Lala's like unlocking like the secrets of the afterlife to him. The end of this episode is pretty similar to the end of the final episode of the real run. The only major difference I'm seeing is that they also see reused ghosts at the end for some reason and... I guess Char just kind of gives up and dies in that battle coup. Oh, this is funny. The Gigan appears and it's actually the thing that destroys the Gundam, not the Zeong. That's incredibly anticlimactic. Alright, so yeah, rereading over these episode draft notes, I don't think anything significantly major was lost except for Shalia Bull. Like, there was Amuro's sidekick. That kid really, like, probably just would have been annoying, like, based on other kids in 70s animes. And the Cusco Owl side plot with Bright is kind of interesting. Hmm. I wonder if it's reflective of what's going on in Halfway's Flash. Probably not, but I can at least see some parallels between the kid and the lady. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, there's definitely a fine line between taking stuff out and putting stuff back in because I feel like G Rich had a really, really rush pacing issue, but at the same time, Removing these weird subplots and additional characters in the original Gundam probably actually made it better. Like, they definitely made Lala, Shar, and Cassilia all have much more stronger and interesting plots. And I feel like, really, the only thing they mainly took out was a bunch of frivolous mobile suit battles. So, um, at least for the original Gundam, I don't think really anything major was lost in, like, the cutdown. But let me know what you guys think. Was there something that really struck out to you as being more interesting in this version? Was there anything you would have rather seen? I mean, at this point, a lot of like these like cutout mobile suit designs like came back as MSBs anyway. So, like I said, I really don't think anything was actually lost in like these cutdowns, like because it all got recycled into other things. Anyway, um, I'll be back later because I was actually trying to get my thoughts together for G Witch, and this somehow became its own thing. Uh, when I finish doing that, I'll have another video out. All right, please subscribe. Catch you guys later.